Hello, everyone, and welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron. Hello. Steve is uh, is with me, and uh, I'm Kevin Nookman. This is Steve from Gospel Kingdom website, and uh, I believe this is episode number, is it six? Uh, I think it's seven. <laughs> episode number seven? Maybe. Wow. These things I don't are... know. <laughs> Let me let me think real quick. We we did one on the on this. We started the second of January, so we did uh, we did five of them in in, in January. And uh, yeah, this is episode number seven, Steve. Wow, that's wow. a good number. So, yeah, that's a good number. So <laughs> so tonight we're gonna talk about um, a few things. Oh, somebody says this is number eight. This is number eight. Someone uh, says number seven. So we yeah, <laughs> uh, I, th I think it's seven because we did five in January and then now two in February. So this is number seven. But uh, eight. We'll do eight next week. How, how about that? Um, that's really what we're going to discuss tonight. So we kind of been through, uh, just as a recap, uh, we talked about our backgrounds. Uh, we talked about um, We talked about the rapture, right? We talked about uh, the wine press judgment. We talked about the Bema seat. Not we talked about the order. kingdom. We talked about the kingdom. Yeah, we talked about the kingdom a lot in in, in episode. I think it was like two, two and three. We we really two yeah. was uh, we really talked about it a lot. Um, and we talked about the difference between um, uh, just being saved and also entry into the kingdom. Uh, we mentioned that you know you can't enter the kingdom unless you are saved. <laughs> that no one is go is going to enter the kingdom unless they are saved. Um, but not all who are saved are going to enter the kingdom. So uh, yes. that was uh, that was well, that's one of the things that um, a lot of people don't understand. They didn't. They don't really know about it. Like we like we said before, a lot of the um, churches and so forth don't really talk about it very much. But um, new wine. But but it's it is new wine to some people, and um, it goes down a little hard sometimes because I mean I think a lot of us were taught that those two things are they go hand in hand. Like yeah, you're saved and you're in the kingdom automatically. New wine but, won't fit in the old wine skin. No, it won't. And um, but you know I always had I I kind of always questioned that because I was like, well, then why? Two things. What? Why? Why even then bother how you live? It doesn't. Yeah. Really, I mean, if it doesn't really matter, then what's the point? Yeah. And then number two, why are we told so many times that these people aren't going to inherit the kingdom? I mean, it, you know, if, if he's talking to believers, why? Why mention it if it's not a, if it's not important? But it is important, and so uh, yeah. I think that um, that you know, you and I. Uh, have learned a, a lot from uh, you know just doing these things, and also I've learned a lot by by talking uh, to you over the phone and watching your videos about these topics. And uh, I do really appreciate um, what you've learned and shared with everybody over the course of your sixteen thousand videos. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I'm sure that other people are, are discovering those um, as we go along too, and and watching as many as they possibly can. But I'm telling you, uh, you're not going to run out of content if you go to Steve's YouTube channel. Uh, there's there, there's a lot of good teaching there. So and I don't want to take credit. Okay, I got a lot of this stuff from Watchmen and others. Okay, the Lord opens our eyes and gives us revelation. It's not because I'm smart and I studied it. You can study all day forever and not get this truth. You have to have God revealing it to you. But I think one of the really um, neat things about all of this is that it it should encourage us, right? I mean, all these discussions should uh, ultimately encourage us. I mean, because there's kind of two ways you can take it, right? One is the way is like, oh, well, wait a minute. Uh, I thought I was guaranteed to go into the kingdom. And it's like, um, well, let me pull that rug underneath, <laughs> out from underneath you. Um, no, no one's guaranteed to go into the kingdom. Um, so that you got to get over immediately. But once you understand that, you, you get out of your denial stage and all, and then you go into to anger and then you grieve and then, and then you ultimately come and, and accept it. Well, then it should encourage you because... 
Um, it's not as high a bar as some people would lead you to believe that it is. Yeah, right? or even your flesh. Once you hear it, you say, oh, I can't make it. It's available. It's easily available, okay? We're not asking yeah. anyone, and God's not asking anyone to be perfect. Exactly. Repent. Just repent, okay? We're going to sin. Just repent. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the key here is like, Look, at we're we are going to 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 continue to sin while we're in this flesh. I mean, that's just there's no there's no two ways about it. I mean, if you if you say that you do not sin, um, you got a big problem because that because because now if you say you don't sin, why do you need a savior at that point, right? I mean, the whole issue of salvation then is up for grabs, right? And so mm -hmm. th th that's that that's a bigger problem. <laughs> is when you say, well, you know, I don't need forgiveness. I don't need a savior. I'm good. I do good things. I do enough good things to balance out the bad things I do. So as long as I'm in the scale and it's better good than bad, then I'm in. Well, uh, no, because no one is good. <laughs> because if you sin once, then the wages of that sin is death is the second death. That is, the, that is the rule. That is the law. That's God's law. But, but God has provided us a way to be able to uh, receive salvation. And that is through his son, Jesus Christ. And right. Jesus was the one who paid for those sins. As long as you believe and receive it, then you, then you get it. And in that, and that is salvation by grace through faith. See, all all those things right there is in that one sentence: is that God provides a free gift of salvation by His grace and only by His grace, because there is no way that you and I can can earn it. Yeah, we can't. But if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for us and that he rose again so that we can have eternal life, then God gives that to us. And he says, yes, well done, good and faithful servant. You've done that. So that is salvation. Salvation 101 right there. And we went through that a lot in, I think, uh, episode two. But, um, but the key is like, and what should encourage you after that is like, getting, you know, more, more than just salvation. I mean, God has all these things in store for those who love him in the future. Yeah. God has the entire expanse of eternity to dole out rewards and blessings and amazing things. Yeah. And the more that you receive during that period of time, the happier you're going to be. I mean, that is just human nature. And in the end, when we become uh, immortal and our uh, corruptible gets thrown off and we get the incorruptible, I mean, we are glorified, but we are still glorified humans, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yeah. We are still human. So yeah. God created us in his image and we have desires. We, we like to be rewarded for things, don't we? I mean, that's a yeah. human nature thing. So consider all the different rewards that that you can attain and, and receive during uh, that period of time. And I said this before, and I'm going to stick by it, Steve. I think the biggest reward of all of that is entry into the kingdom. I agree. I agree. I mean, it, it's it, I, I understand that you can like this comment here. I understand this comment. I don't even care if I take out the trash in heaven, then I will be thankful. Absolutely, yes. We are absolutely 100% thankful that God has provided us a way to escape the second death, correct? I mean, that's right. Without, without salvation, we are doomed to the lake of fire for eternity. And that is a horrible place to be. You do not want to go there. So, yes, anything is better than that. However, there are other things that are better than just picking up trash in this life and in the afterlife as well. So those are the things that, that we're hoping that, that this, these discussions 
encourage you to to further the kingdom, further your entry into the kingdom, further the rewards that you're going to receive in the kingdom, and try to to stay out of the group mm-hmm. that's not going to be in that in the kingdom that's going to be disqualified. That's really the key word, right, Steve? Yeah. And there's another thing, you know, maybe some people are not interested in rewards, but how about, would you like to see the father? If you don't, if you can't enter the kingdom, you don't even get to see the father. You'll be in the throne room probably for the Bema seat and then kicked out and you will never be allowed in. So maybe some of you like, I don't care about having a mansion. I don't care about having a chest full of jewels. I don't care about any of that other stuff, but I'm sure you care about going to the throne room and worshiping the father. And you won't be able to do that if you're not allowed into the kingdom. Yeah, I mean, jewels are nice. Jewels are pretty. I like jewels, but I mean, you I'm know. just saying there's some people out there who are not interested in that. But yeah, that's something no. I'm sure it's in the heart of every believer. They want to go and worship the Father. Yeah. You know, um, I think a lot of us have uh, an interesting relationship with the Father because, I mean, the Father, you know, as you know, is a, um, I mean, our Heavenly Father is just. And he, uh, he is, is pure holiness. And it's not something that we can attain right now. And so you kind of, you go to the Father and you're, the only way you can really go to the Father is through his son. <laughs> Let's be honest. I mean, yeah. because you go by yourself, uh, you don't, you're not going to be able to withstand that. You're just, you're not. you got to have the son and the son is the one who intercedes for us. He's the one who has has paid the price. I mean, we've not paid any price, okay, for, for, for our sins. We haven't paid anything for them. And if we, you we try, can't. you're, you're going to be in debt. Exactly. You're going to be in says. debt. Yeah, exactly. You're going to be in debt. Those works that you do in order to try to, to achieve salvation – those are known as like those are known as dead works to achieve salvation. Now, to achieve rewards, that's a different story because you can receive awards for um, works that you do. And we talked about that a lot. I think it was maybe two episodes ago about um, your works being tried in the fire, right? Yeah. And 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 some works will withstand and go through the fire, but but some works will, will be burned up. Be a seat video. And if all of your works are burned up, that's, that, that is not a good place to be. Now, granted, you are not going to be sent to the lake of fire. You're not going to be sent to hell. You're not, you're, you're not losing your salvation because all your works are burned up. However, you will suffer loss. And that's what the Bible says. You will suffer loss. And you'll also hear the words, depart from me, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Right? Yeah. And so, that's a sad thing to, to think about. And most people, I believe, think that when they, like when they first hear those words and when they first study things, that a lot of people jump to the conclusion that those people are unbelievers. Right? Yeah, some people do, but it's not true. Yeah, but that's not true. And uh, I think that a lot of people believe when they they first hear those things that they're just like, well, that's, you know, they're not, that's not any Christian. That's not any believer. That's, that's somebody who who never believed and they're going to weep and gnash their teeth because, uh, Mm -hmm. because they didn't receive salvation. No. Yeah. That's what that specifically says. He will pull those people who offend in his kingdom. They're in his kingdom and they offend and they will be brought outside. Mm. Yeah, and and you know, like we said before, nobody is going to enter the kingdom who isn't saved. I mean, right. it's just you. The, so those people who are in there for a bit and are and are cast out, they were never. They, they, they were they're obviously saved because they're in the kingdom for some period of time. Yeah, I mean, who knows how long that is? We do, yeah. it doesn't really say, but I mean, I can't, I can't imagine it's very long. Yeah, but um, but you know the point is is that you you know for people to say well you know the only people that are cast out in outer darkness and weeping and ash and teeth those are unbelievers and that's that's that is not the case and I and I, and I think we made a pretty good uh, 
case of, of that they're not over the last couple of weeks, especially through all those Bible verses. I think one of those key Bible verses, Steve, was, um, you know, was the one that's like, you know, salt loses its saltiness. It's, it does. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's not good anymore, but it's also not meant for the dunghill. So yeah. there is a middle, there's a middle ground there. Yes. And we have a verse that says in Revelation, those outside are saved. It says the nation of those who are saved are outside. It says it right in Revelation. Can't argue with that unless you want to yeah. throw Revelation away. Yeah, that's true. And it says there will be the he healing of the nations, right? Yes, there, there's no healing going on in the lake of fire. <laughs> no. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean that that's you're past that. There's, yeah. no, there's no healing going on there. So who's being healed? And it can't be us because it also says those who are in the kingdom, God will wipe away our tears and we will feel feel no pain. We will fear no uh, feel no uh, death. So it's not for us and it's not for those in the lake of fire. So who is it for? It's for the nations who are saved outside. Mm -hmm. It's the only other group left. Well, there you go. Um, let's see. Uh, Steve, there, there, I, want, I want to bring up this comment here. Uh, Christ already told me I'll be outside the kingdom, but I'm grateful he accepted me. Well, I plan to be on outside too, but I, if those who are inside can go in and out, okay? <laughs> Just one. because God says you're going to be outside the kingdom doesn't mean you're not allowed in. I plan on being, I spend plenty of spending a lot of time outside the kingdom, being a priest to those out there. Okay. Right. And, and, and just because you hear something in prayer, you, you got to test it with the Bible as well. So maybe it's true from God, but you got to interpret correctly. God's got to work for you outside there, but you, you know, you do have a home inside. Okay. That's a possibility. All right. So, so this, this could be true. Christ already told me I'll be outside the kingdom. That, that that may be that that, that problem I mean that is true either way if you're saved you're going to be able to be outside the kingdom the question is is can you also go inside and um, so you need to ask Christ if uh, if you're going to be able to go inside as well <laughs> yeah. that's the way I look at that is that yeah you'll be able to go outside the question is can you go inside so um, yeah I think that really Steve what it all boils down to is that we are attempting to encourage everyone to study the Bible, to study this the, these passages, and to um, you know do do good works. I mean that's that's really what uh, what what we need to be doing during this period of time. Two things: one thing, preaching the gospel of salvation, um, letting people know what the good news is. That's the gospel, right? The good news of salvation, spoken about in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. And that is what we tell people and that's the that's the the verse that says, you know, you need to be ready to give somebody a word for the hope that you have, right? And um, we don't uh, live in fear here during these in times here these last days. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's going on that can bring you down pretty quickly. I mean, if you have no hope, uh, you get depressed and uh, you start doing things that are questionable, to say the least. Uh, you start making bad decisions. You start, uh, you know, I mean, just look at, at some of the bad decisions that people, I mean, if you ever watched the news over the last, well, during your entire lifetime, <laughs> but really, I mean, over the last like three, three, three years or so, you can see a lot of people in a group herd mentality making very bad yeah. decisions, right? Yeah, I mean, we all remember the summer of 2020, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm convinced. I am convinced that the uh, great delusion is already here. I could be wrong. It could be a precursor, but I, I think so. But God's trying to get everything going um, towards the end. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that we, we see that. And there definitely is a different mindset from... Uh, from people that are that are doing those things and from the people that are looking at those things and going, well, the Bible said that they were going to be doing those things during the last day, yeah. that there was going to be lawlessness, that people were going to be lovers of themselves, uh, you know, that people were going to be mockers and scoffers, that they were going to turn away from sound doctrine. And, 
and they were going to make up their own fables and lies about things. I mean, uh, you know, every day there's a new definition of a word that's changed from what it used to be and because it suits oh. their agenda and suits their needs. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of that manipulation going on right now. And we, you know, if you got, if you get into that and then go, you know, put your faith into that and into to mankind to somehow come out of this, you're going to be left very wanting and disappointed. I can tell you that. Yeah. So the hope that we have um, is that, I mean, really the ultimate hope that we have, Steve, is that we're going to be resurrected, is that we're going to be changed, is that we are Amen. going to, 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 to put off this, this uh, sinful coil that we have and then put on incorruption, and that one day we will be like him, Jesus, and that we will see him as he is. That, that is our blessed hope, isn't it? It is, it not? and it's glorious. I can't wait for that day. <laughs> It kind of, but when I talk about that, that stuff, it's something stirs up inside of me and it I does. can see that it stirs up inside of you too, is that you start thinking about that and you start, you start wondering, you know, how, how much different it's going to be to not have to deal with, uh, with all the things that a corruptible human has to deal with every day. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's going to be amazing. Putting that off. And not having to deal with a sinful nature anymore. I mean, that is a blessed hope, I gotta tell you. Uh, and then living in in a situation for eternity where you don't have to deal with that from other people as well. <laughs> I mean, that's just pure joy. I mean, th think about it. We are one day, Steve, you and I will have nothing to complain about. <laughs> Uh, consider true. that. Sadly, hey, look at that. Or some are still going to complain. Sadly, some are complain. They're going to say, "Lord, why are you giving him the same reward as me?" You know, some are going to say, "Lord, but didn't we not do these works for you?" Some are still going to complain. That's true. But even that day is going to come and go. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. But uh, I mean, you know. It, I, I really um, hope that these these discussions encourage you like they like my discussions with Steve prior to these and even during these things do because uh, that's really what living during these period of time this period of time um, is all about it's it's about overcoming it's about it's about being steadfast it's about running the race to the finish right yeah and we get weary. And it's not hard to start getting weary. It's not difficult uh, because there's a lot of things that are going on every day that push us, that try to push us down, right? It's they true. just try to like wear on us yep. and they, they distract us or they, they get us upset about something. And it's, it's not hard to, uh, to get in, you know, to really start feeling uh, down in those things. But what we need to do is we need to overcome that. We need to, we yeah. need to basically uh, rise above those things and know that God's plan is working to perfection. That's that correct. God, it's not out of control, that God is in control and he's controlling everything that's going on from a bird's eye view <laughs> and knows exactly what's going to happen and has planned it out so that it works out perfectly. And Amen. in addition to that, if you are a believer and a follower of Christ, then you are a sheep that has a perfect good shepherd. So he's, he's not going to put you in a, a position and in a, in a place where you can't handle it. As long as you keep him centered and first, you're going to be able to overcome anything. And that goes for even after the rapture, even more so, I believe, Steve, because you're talking about people that are going to have to willfully give up their lives. 
I mean, that is a that is a big deal. I mean, that, yeah. you know that you got to have full one hundred percent trust and faith in order to be able to go down that road. So. Just they'll, know. they'll be persuaded to. It'll be a difficult time. The world, the, the world, the system, God Himself, gray areas are aren't gonna stick around at that point. Everyone's gonna have to choose a side. Mm, yeah, very true. Very true. And uh, and the two sides uh, will be those who worship the the beast and the antichrist and take the mark. And those who are beheaded for having faith and belief in Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean that's that, that that's ultimately going to be uh, the choice that 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 um, almost everybody are, is going to have to make. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, prior to that, there is going to be a rapture of the body of Christ, and uh, for those who who don't believe that, um, okay. I mean, we went through that in, in, in episode four. Um, we talked about the rapture uh, quite a bit. We laid out why it's a, a pre-tribulation rapture. Um, but if you continue to choose to believe that that's not possible or that, you know, it's not going to happen, then either one of two things is going to happen. One, you're going to be raptured and it's going to be like amazing surprise to you. And it's going to be fan You're going to don't worry. You'll be happy. <laughs> you're not going to be upset that that's that, that it's a pre-tribulation rapture. Okay. Or number two, uh, the rapture will happen and you'll still be here and you'll be like uh, one of two things. Then one, you'll believe the narrative of the, the mass who are basically saying, maybe, no, that's not the rapture. That can't be possibly the rapture because I'm a good person <laughs> or the Pope is still here <laughs> or whatever their excuse may be. Um, or number two, you will be like, oh, wow, uh, that was the rapture and, uh, I missed it. So what do I need to do in order to make sure that I'm not going to like a fire and that I'm ultimately going to be resurrected right in the first resurrection, not the second resurrection. That's not the one you want to be <laughs> resurrected. In. You want to be resurrected in the first resurrection. So, so then you'll look into that a little bit more, but, um, but I'll, I'll take a, I'll do a Bob Barber saying here, but be that as it may, you right now, you have the, the, the ability to receive uh, salvation and be able to be caught up together with those who are the dead in Christ who rise first and to meet the Lord in the air. And, you know, while we still have this time, while the rapture has not happened, um, that's a good time to get, to, to get saved. And I, I got to tell you, Steve, it's it, when I when I just said that it's really interesting because one day when that rapture happens, that is that that is like a hard door closed. I mean, yes. you, yeah, it, it's just like, and and one day someone will be like, man, I wish I, I wish I decided this or I wish I knew about this before this happened, you know, and like, and that day is approaching, it is coming. Yeah, it's it, it's not. It's not like thousands of years or even hundreds of years off, Steve. No. In no. fact, you you believe that it's going to happen here within the next few months. Yeah, I, I do. I believe it, it'll probably happen. Again, it's not a fuss, say the Lord. I could be wrong. I'm not banking on it. But I believe the rapture will happen before next fall. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of people that believe that. Uh, you're not alone. Um, it's not just Steve, <laughs> one guy in the wilderness saying, uh, I've looked at all these things and it looks like it's going to happen this year. Um, and it looks like it's going to happen before June. Um, you're in a lot of good company, Steve. There are a lot of people that are believing that and, and are seeing the, the lineup, um, of things right now, along with biblical, history and prophecy and seeing where we where we are in timelines of I mean literally thousands and thousands of years um, that all kind of point to you can kind of circle this time frame right around this time frame uh, between pretty much now and like the next 10 years as being like 
a lot of, you know, a lot of things going to happen during that period of time to kind of wrap up this whole uh, thing before the second coming, right? Hammer. Ah, okay, great. Um, yep, I got got some more more Russian bots in here. Um, isn't that nice? This is where um, I agree with Bob, who you just referenced. I believe 927, 927 is going to happen. People might not understand what that is. That's probably the day uh, the Feast of Trumpets happens, and I believe that's when Daniel 927 will be fulfilled, which begins uh, the tribulation. Now, I think the rapture has to happen before that. Anytime. I'm not looking at any date before that. Yeah, isn't that uh, isn't that interesting that um, that Daniel nine twenty seven talks about uh, the Antichrist confirming a covenant with many um, Israel and other nations, basically, and, and strengthening a, a covenant there with the for, seven, for seven years, right? And and that and the, and, the, and the weird thing, the lineup kind of of that with the first day of the year for in the in the Jewish calendar is the head of the year Rosh Hashanah, right? Um, is for the first of Tishri, and that's uh, and it looks like that date is going to be September twenty seventh on their Gregorian calendar uh, this year. Wouldn't it be interesting that? And people were like, "Well, that hold on a second. That's a Gregorian calendar. You you can't you can't match that up with any kind of Bible verse." Well, hold on a second here. Bible verses. <laughs> Daniel didn't write down nine twenty seven and then write that. Okay, those Bible verses were made up by people way later. Okay, so uh, so was the Gregorian calendar. So to say that you can't match those two things up, they were pretty much created by the same kind of people. <laughs> So uh, it could actually could match up where it you've could. got Daniel 927 and September 27th, uh, both pointing to a, a, a confirming of a covenant with many for seven yeah. years. And, and who knows the exact day or hour of the Feast of Trumpets. Different people and different calendars point to different things. I'm just looking at that time period. And, uh, it, you know, Daniel 927 might not happen on September 27th, but um, the Feast of Trumpets is going to be around that season. You know, there's always arguments every year, which day is the real Feast of Trumpets? We don't know. We don't know. So, Well, you don't know until it happens. And, yeah. um, and that's, uh, that, that's, that's why it has that idiom of the day that no man knows the day or the hour is because, yeah. uh, no, for, first of all, uh, you, you don't know if it's the Feast of Trumpets until you actually spot the crescent moon. So yeah. if you can't see the crescent moon, it's not the Feast of Trumpets, unless it's already been 30 days since the previous month, and then it becomes uh, the first day of the month automatically because you can't have more than 30 days in a Jewish month. So there, there is a time where you could say, to, tonight we do start the Feast of Trumpets for sure because it's been 30 days and we didn't sight the moon the day before or so forth. But there, but that doesn't that rarely happens. Mm -hmm. What most most of the time happens, and this also counts like if it's raining, for example. So if it's raining or super cloudy and you can't see the moon, well, you don't start the month. <laughs> I mean, th th that's how arbitrary it gets around the Feast of Trumpets, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but it is when it, when you do sight that that sliver of the moon um, in in Israel, <laughs> particularly Jerusalem, <laughs> that's when it starts, and you have to have two witnesses confirm it. So, yeah. um, Kevin, that, I want to talk about this comment. The end times are here. I got to speak on that. Which one is this? The end times are here. Made a comment. We could be in the tribulation. That's, I want to speak on that, if you don't mind. Uh, Kevin and I believe we are in the area before the tribulation called the beginning of sorrows. I have a video on it. Uh, it's called the beginning of sorrows. Revisited. Go to my channel to find it. Uh, we're in that period. Jesus talks about it in Matthew 24. I think it's five through eight where he says there are rumor, wars and rumors of wars. Do not be troubled. 
Uh, there's going to be pestilences in the, those days. And he says, these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows is a time period that transfers one age to another age. So we're kind of between two ages. We're still in the age of grace. And we're still out not quite in age of tribulation. We're in that transferring period uh, where things are changing. We are not in the tribulation, despite what some people are saying in other channels. We do not believe that the first seal has not happened. Daniel 9:27 has not happened. Now I do believe the Trump peace plan is the covenant that the Antichrist will increase, but that peace plan is not been increased therefore daniel 9 27 has not happened yet that's my take on that you kevin yeah there there, there are only i think like four countries um that were in that and then of course you had egypt and jordan from before that have some kind of like normalcy or peace with with uh, israel and and those four new ones basically but i think that the that confirming of that covenant is going to be with israel and many more than just four or six yeah i mean it says the many and when i think of the numbers four and six that, that's just a barely bit more than a few mm -hmm. i mean many to me means like tens and tens of nations you know that's like many 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 mm -hmm. i mean possibly 60 70 nations maybe even a yeah. hundred i mean so you're talking about many nations now also if the tribulation was between 2017 and 2024, then that means three and a half years in the middle of that, that week, that year, that seven year period, then the Antichrist would have needed to go into the temple and declare himself as God and set up the abomination of death that makes desolate or the abomination of mm -hmm. desolation. Well, that didn't happen last year. Mm -hmm. So, so that kind of, I mean, if people are like, okay, hold on, I'm going to be a mid-trib uh, wrath guy or mid-trib uh, rapture guy. And I'm going to say that the wrath only happens in the last three and a half years of the 70th week. And we're going to be raptured right before that, right at the midpoint of the tribulation. And that the tribulation is between 2017 and 2024. Well, that period of time just left you last year. <laughs> So now you got to make up some kind of new thing that's going to go on and you got to revise all your plans and your calendars and everything like that, because that ship sailed. Mm -hmm. So for those who are hanging on saying that the Revelation 12 sign started the tribulation, and I do know of one person who, who, who banked everything they had on that and that became their total, their, their complete ministry. Yeah. And the initial start was a BW. And uh, it went, she, she went all in on that. Well, unfortunately, it, it didn't work out for her because 2021 has come and gone. And then, just like back in 2017 with Pastor Sandy Armstrong, they'll say that 2021 hasn't ended yet. And that 2021 goes until April. And it's like, which calendar are you using? If you're going to say 2021, you're obviously using a Gregorian calendar. Yes. And the Gregorian calendar switches years on January 1st, <laughs> which we know we've already had. Yeah. So, you know, it's like they just want to, they want to, Steve, these people want to hold on so much to their doctrine. They're invested. They don't want to repent. repent. Yeah. They're another thing, another another important thing is, is it like the fourth seal, Kevin, third or fourth seal, where a fourth of the world dies? We haven't seen that. No, we have not. Uh, we haven't seen Babylon taken down by the ten kings. No. Uh, we haven't seen that. Okay. So no, no, we're not in the tribulation. Get off that horse. We haven't seen. <laughs> we haven't seen the pit opened. We haven't seen the beast rise from the pit. We haven't seen the beast devour the harlot. We haven't seen the mark of the beast. We haven't seen the false prophet make an image or have an image made to the beast. We haven't seen any of those things yet. So, yeah, be, just be patient, people. It will happen. But but you don't want to be here for that. You you really don't. You want to you want to you know be found worthy to escape all these things that are coming upon the earth. Yes, amen. Amen. I mean, that, that that's that's ultimately what, what, what you want to have. So 
Also, Steve, I want to bring up something too. That that we I do believe that we are in the beginning of sorrows. Uh, I believe that we are well into actually the beginning of sorrows, and that we are quickly getting into this like blurry transitional period yes. between the age of grace and the start of the tribulation. And it's the the month the, the the waters are getting murky. They're 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 kind of they're like they're mixing a little bit, like they're kind of squashing together here. But there is going to be a hard cutoff. Yes, and, that, and, and that's going to be um, well. One, the rapture is going to be a gigantic thing of that. But also, of course, the signing of and and the signing of a, of a peace deal with many. Uh, we said before, you agree that the first seal is most likely Daniel nine twenty seven. You agree with me on that? I do. I do agree with you on that because um, it sounds like this 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 person on the white horse that comes in to basically save the day, right, and and conquers through peace. That it's not Jesus Christ because immediately following the first horse is the second horse, which is the red horse, which is war. And it takes peace from the earth. Yeah. Well, we know that when Jesus returns, that peace isn't going to be taken from the earth at that right right then at that point. No. Okay. Peace is actually uh, it, the only the only thing you can say is this: at the end of the one thousand years, Satan is loosed for a little while, and he goes and he deceives the nations, and the nations rise up and come against Jerusalem. I would say that okay. That's not entirely peaceful, but you're talking about after 1,000 years. So you'd have to say the first seal is Jesus, and that 2,000, 1,000 years later, then the second horse comes on. Well, then what about the third horse? Because, <laughs> because then you start running into a big problem, right? Because at that point, when those people amass against Jerusalem, they don't win. As a matter of fact, it's not much of a fight whatsoever. God sends down fire and destroys them. I mean, that's that's yeah. what I, it's like one verse. <laughs> it's like they come against Jerusalem and God sends down fire and destroys them. And it's oh, like, right. and then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. It's like, okay, <laughs> well, we know when a new heaven and a new earth comes, there's not going to be the third horse, of, yeah. uh, the black horse of inflation and uh, you know, and pestilence and things like that. There's not going to be any. still have the seven bowls and the seven trumpets. Yeah. There's no time for any of that. No time for any of that. So going all the way back and saying, okay, yeah, the first horse comes in as, 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 a, as a peaceful, um, you know, pseudo peace really is what it is because you immediately followed by war. So it's not real peace. It's, it's a peace that lasts for like, uh, you know, he conquers with peace. Well, that doesn't work out so well. <laughs> You I mean, when you really think of the definition of conquering through peace, it's like it's almost like, you know, this is for your own good kind of thing. You're going to you're going to you're going to worship me and you're going to be happy and you're going to like it. And it's like no one really likes that as a, as a human. Right. You're just kind of like, no, I, I don't I don't think that's cool. <laughs> well, there's going to be a lot of people that doesn't think that that's cool. And, yeah. and, I, and the Antichrist has. Some people believe like the when the Antichrist comes on the scene, the Antichrist is going to be smooth sailing for him. It's going to be just fine. As a matter of fact, no. When you read Daniel, th there are a lot of people that are against the Antichrist. Yeah. There are a lot of groups, and they're not all believers either. That's correct. So he's, the he's, Antichrist he's, he's, he's has all these different in one of those battles, if I remember correctly, in Daniel. Yeah, he actually does. He actually does get whooped because he goes down in the south and he gets booted out. But then he comes back down there and he wins. Yeah. But um, so read, I think it's like Daniel eight. I think is a lot of somewhere in there. Yeah. But um, but like, and then he's like, oh, but there's there's trouble. The kings of the east are the trouble. Are, are now trouble, and he's just got trouble. Trouble. It's what it talks mm -hmm. about. He's got all kinds of trouble going on. He also has to. He and he's like, oh, well, he's got ten ten kings. He's got 10 kings. They're all good to go. Actually, three of them he's got to put down. <laughs> so not all 10 kings are even on his side. I mean, he's got to put down three of them. So, yeah, it's it's not all uh, it's not all, uh, you know, cherries and, and, <laughs> and blossoms for him during yeah. d during that period of time. He's got a lot of problems, which makes sense. Because yeah. when you consider the world, 
it is a complicated mess. Yes. Uh, and it's going to continue to be a complicated mess. It's not all of a sudden just going to be okay. Lawlessness now, and lawlessness. Right. And he's got to overcome this harlot system. He's got to devour this harlot system that, that's in this world that's, that's pervasive today. We can see the harlot system. The harlot system has been going on for a long, long time. I mean, it's going to come into like its full blossom during the, the tribulation, but um, but but over the last uh, you know two thousand years, this harlot system has been in place, and, and it, it it continues to grow, and it continues to have more and more authority over all nations right now. Yeah. And we can I do see have one it. more thing to say on on Daniel nine twenty seven. I also think not only is there going to be increase of of nations. I think a big part of that increase is the Antichrist will allow Israel to build their temple. Well, that's interesting. Um, I, I, I tend to agree with that because uh, ultimately we know that in the middle of that week that the, the Antichrist is going to go into the temple. Okay, yeah. so there, there has to be a temple prior to Jesus returning, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus doesn't return until after the Antichrist goes into the temple in the middle of that week. Jesus comes at the end of that week. That's when he comes back. So there has to be a temple. And right now we know that there is no temple. There's no temple set up in Israel. And there hasn't been one since it was uh, destroyed. And every single brick of it, every single block of it was basically destroyed down to nothing in 70 A.D. It's been a long time since they've had a temple standing, but they are going to have a temple. And this temple that it talked about talks about having an outer court that's reserved for the Gentiles and that there's going to be, you know, something out there that's going to be OK and left there. Well, Steve, we know what's sitting on the Temple Mount right now. And there's a mosque that's sitting there and it's been sitting there for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, well over a thousand years. So for people to say, well, the temple can't be built because that thing's there. Well, guess what? You can actually have both those structures on the Temple Mount. And I believe that there will be both those structures on the Temple Mount. During well, there's the also another theory. I don't know if you ever heard this. They could do back like Moses' time. Did you know the temple could be a tent? Tabernacle. Yeah. Yeah. It could be a tent. They could put a tent up there. They could do that too. And you know, other people have said that the temple actually wasn't sitting on that mount. It was sitting south of that mount I've heard somewhere that. else. So there's all kinds of conjecture on that. Yeah. Um, but I think the point is, is that wherever this, this temple or tabernacle, whatever they decide they get built, you, you believe that the Antichrist is basically going to permit that, possibly even as part of that agreement. I do. I, I have no hard evidence, but I, I believe that to be true. Because uh, without, without the agreement and the backing of this leader, the Antichrist, the, the Muslim nations would not allow such a thing. And I also believe that ties to Ezekiel, the Ezekiel War, the falling of some of these Islamic nations will allow the leaders to make that choice and make that a covenant and allow Israel to build that temple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think someone just mentioned uh, Bob Cornicke's view. Yeah, the city of David. It's like it's like this this area south of the Temple Mount that um, he believes is a really good candidate to um, to be the place where the temple actually stood, due to water things and all all kinds of stuff i mean yeah, yeah. Made, i've but, seen yeah. some of the videos it's intriguing isn't it i mean it is for a while i believed it now i don't but <laughs> <laughs> but you're not the one who's going to build it anyway so you don't need to know where it is <laughs> I, i'm going to help build the next one after that kevin ah that's right the millennium <laughs> kingdom right yeah, the millennium <laughs> kingdom. so there's going to be four temples total aren't there um so we already had the first one which was uh, known as Sol i guess as um uh, solomon's temple um and Isn't then the next cool one to think that we might be part of that part of making the fourth one 
It's possible. We'll, we'll maybe we'll get to that next week, but it's a possibility, well, folks. Maybe we maybe we just oversee the the construction of it. I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, I don't. I'm not such a builder myself. I kind of. I'm more of a of an overseer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what kings do, right? We're going to be kings. Well, exactly. I mean, you know, <laughs> we don't get our hands dirty, do we? I mean, <laughs> we'll, but have, yeah, we'll have but immortal you know, hands. We'll probably be moving those rocks for those guys. Here, guys, I got that rock. Well, that's the thing is like, you know, it, you know, we, we should we, we should be able just to, to, to just to move it like that. You know, just even think it and have it done. Um, at that point, but um, you know, but there is something to be said about building something with your hands, and yeah. uh, you know, because I uh, I watched that show a long time ago, Bewitched, you know, and it was oh. like, so so she was in the in the, the kitchen, and Darren would come home. He's like, "What's for dinner?" She goes, "Oh, I I, I didn't I didn't have any time to make it." Tinkle tinkle tink, boom! There's dinner, <laughs> and it's like, eh, you know, okay, sure, it's probably good, but I mean. At the same time, it's like, did you really make it? You know, <laughs> no. I mean, you know, I would, I would, I think that, that humans like just like making things and yeah. saying, I made that, you know? So, um, yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see, um, how, you know, what our involvement is with the, uh, the Millennium Temple. Sally um, but, asked a question at the beginning I would like to talk you? on. Okay. Uh, she was asking about Judas repenting, and I want to speak on that. Oh, okay. That sounds good. How about this? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, Sally, I don't know where it is. Afterwards, I will post it below. There is a scripture. It's either in Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. I'm fairly certain that talks about there is a godly sorrow and there's another kind of sorrow. That other kind of, again, it's been a long time since I've studied this. Uh, this is something I actually learned in Bible school that there's another kind of sorrow, and that's the kind of sorrow that Judas had. Judas was sorry that he got caught. He wasn't sorry that that he was involved in evil and wish he had chosen the other. That isn't the kind of sorrow he had. Unfortunately, I don't remember all the details on that. You might be able to find it before me. Just look for the word sorrow. I think it's in Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, and that'll answer it. Also, we do know that he was condemned and not saved because there is a scripture, and I don't remember where that is either. It might be in Hebrews where he's called the son of perdition, or maybe even in Acts where it says there is a place reserved for him. So we know for certain, you know, the Bible tells us we can't know who's saved and who's not saved except ourselves. We can know about that. But we do know the Antichrist and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire, and we also know by scripture that, they, that Judas has a place in uh, perdition, hmm. the lake of fire. Very true. And then Sally also said later that Satan will be so mad when he will be cast down to earth. Uh, that's the other thing too, is like, I, I think I, when I read about the timing of that, it's, it, it looks to me that it's pretty much around that, the midpoint of that 70th week. Yeah. Um, so Satan being cast down to the earth, cause he knows he, had, he, he and then at that point he knows he, his time is very short cause he's, out of heaven at that point um that hasn't happened yet nope another uh, reason why we, we know we're not in the middle of the tribulation there are woes that are involved actually there are angels that say whoa 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 about those mm -hmm. times saying they the, the satan's been cast down woe to the inhabitants on the earth um that hasn't happened yet so um no we are we could you also speak you know we've got about another we didn't really talk about the millennium much tonight did we um so I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, change up the title uh, or the description of this one or and the title, um, and I don't even know what to call it. It's like a cornucopia of of, of good stuff. Um, <laughs> we answer some um, questions too. So next week we'll n n next week we'll talk more, we'll talk about the millennium. But um, that's the nice thing about uh, about this broadcast is that um, we don't have anybody to answer to except for the. <laughs> Except for God, I mean. So as long as we're talking about the Word, we're we're, we're good to go. But um, Steve, I want I, I'd like you to say one more thing and explain because there are a lot of people that will say that the seventieth week or the uh, seven years is not all God's wrath. That God's wrath is only reserved for the last half of that tribulation. 
What oh, you, you put me on that? the spot. We did, we did pull up that scripture, I think, in the rapture video we did. It talks about, is it in Isaiah? And it talks about, and it, and it connects to Daniel, okay? Where it says that, that the wrath, that we're, it, it, come my people, enter into your chambers, shut the doors behind you, for the wrath of God has come. That word wrath is the same one in Daniel, okay? And in and, and Daniel, it says that wrath, uh, it says something to the effect of the beginning of the wrath. So the beginning of the wrath was happening at, at, at the beginning of his, the Antichrist coming onto the scene. So if, if that's the beginning, then that means the whole thing is the wrath of God. Unfortunately, I don't remember the exact verse. We did put it on the screen. We did mention it, I think, I think in our rapture video. But that's the strongest evidence that the whole seven years is God's wrath because it connects to the weeks of the 70th week, which you just shared, is the wrath of God because the Antichrist comes onto the scene to begin that wrath. I don't remember the verse. I don't know. We can try to find it if you want. You want me to try to find it? Well, I think that, um, you know, I think I might have found something here. Um, let's just take a look here. I think that, I, it's, I think Isaiah 26. Um, how about this area here where it says in verse 20, uh, come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation has be overpassed yes behold the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity the earth shall also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain so that word um, that word in in that scripture there um, is found i found it it's it's also the same word found in daniel 8 19 which is he said behold i'm going to let you know what will happen during the final time of the indignation wrath of god upon the ungodly for it is it concerns the appointed time of the end so the end of the wrath is the last three years but right here it says it's the it's the end of the indignation and wrath it's not the entire uh, wrath. And now th that was uh, the Amplify, the New Living Translation says, then he said, I'm here to tell you what will happen later in the time of wrath. What you have seen pertains to the very end time. So here, whoever this is speaking, I think this is one of the angels speaking to Daniel. He's going to show him what's later in the wrath. In the so, wrath. Okay, so that's why we, we can believe that's the best scriptural evidence i have of that the seven years is all of god's wrath yeah well it, it makes sense because i mean if it's later in the wrath the wrath had to start before so yes. um yeah that, that totally makes sense in addition to that jesus is the one who's opening the seals i mean and, and the things that happened during that period of time about the peace pieces taken from the earth i mean th that is a wrathful thing to do is it not mm -hmm. I mean, it's when you judgment. take peace, it's what, all judgment. What fills the void of when peace is gone? That'd be war. So, and what does war do? War kills. So, I mean, th there is th there is wrath going on there during that time. Those are all judgments. So it makes sense. And we are not appointed to wrath. Yeah. Uh, you know. So I, we're, I, we're I, not appointed sure. to the full wrath of God. Yeah. <laughs> and I did mention, but I didn't read it in Matthew. 24 it's in the beginning of sorrows he says do not be troubled do not be troubled so why would he tell us not to be troubled when you get to verse 9 mm -hmm. you know verse 8 says these are the beginning of sorrows verse 9 he starts describing the fifth seal so the fifth seal is trouble but the verse before that he says the beginning of sorrows so before verse 8 he says do not be troubled why because we're out of here folks if right. you're ready don't be right. troubled Exactly. That's a really good point. Yeah. Do not be troubled. And I think that's, uh, we're going to go ahead and end on that note. Um, and we're going to say, continue to not be troubled during these, this period of time, uh, because uh, we do have a blessed hope. 
and the Lord is coming for us, um, and we will see him uh, in the air one day. Uh, he will descend with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God. Wow, amazing. That's, that is going to happen one of these days, Steve. One of these days that'll happen. But until that happens, we are going to continue to be steadfast in the word. We are going to continue to have this blessed hope. We are going to continue to overcome the world, and we are not going to uh, to let them take us down. We are not going to be conformed to the world, but we are going to be transformed by the renewing of our minds in the Amen. word of God. We keep doing works for God. Amen, Steve. All right. Well, hope everyone has a great week, and we will see you back here next week for episode eight of Iron Sharpens Iron. God bless. God bless everyone.